Hello, I'm Dave Barnhart, Electrical Senior for Combination Inspections for the City of Portland. And this is Kim Appleberry. He's one of our A-level electrical inspectors. He's going to do a final electrical inspection today. Hi, Kim Appleberry here, City of Portland inspector. We're going to do a final electrical inspection on this house today. It's a skinny house, as you can see, and a lot of controversy about those, but you're going to get a chance to see inside and see what they look like from the inside. So we'll get started on the outside here. I'm going to walk around the side and check uh, where the service is coming in. Here we have where the electrical service is coming into the building. We have the meter, of course, the meter uh, receptacle, the main service mast, and the weather head at the top, and the service drop from the power company comes across. Over here we have a stub out from the grounding system of the building. That's to hook up to the grounds for the low voltage, the cable TV and the telephone. Over here we have the gas pipe and the bond to the gas pipe from the electrical grounding system of the building. And that's tight. We have a receptacle outside here. Of course this needs to be GFI protected. Test it here. Yep, it trips it off so that's good. Then we'll go inside and look at the panel. Okay, we're inside the garage now and here's the panel. And here's the GFI receptacle that I just tripped outside, so we'll reset it there. And then I'll take the cover off the panel here. And uh, before we're doing that, we'll throw the main breaker off. So we're turning off the power to all the lower part of the panel. Take a look at the breakers here. They have to have labeling so that you know what circuits go where. Okay, so even though the circuit breaker is off, these where the wires are coming in here is still hot, so we have to be careful of that. Everything else below here is dead. So I'm looking for loose connections. I'm also looking for the wire sizing. A 20 amp breaker needs to have at least a number 12 wire to it. So I'm feeling the size of the wires while I'm also giving them a little tug to make sure they're tight. It's very important that electrical connections all be tight. A loose connection creates heat, heat creates fires. So we give a little wiggle to all the connections, make sure that they're tight. Okay, everything looks good and um, the uh, wire sizing is good. We have a multi-wire circuit here. This has to be on a two-pole breaker. These are um, two hots that are sharing a neutral and they have to be on a, a two-pole breaker like this so both sides of the both circuits go off at the same time it's a safety factor over here I think we've got the same same thing that needs to be a two-pole breaker and here same thing again so we need some two-pole breakers we'll write that as a correction okay we're in a little hallway half bath here it also has washer and dryer in here. So over here we have a receptacle next to the sink and that's got the GFI on it. We'll check that. Okay. Overhead light, fan. That's good. Over here we have a receptacle for the washing machine. Because it's in the bathroom it has to be ground fault circuit interrupter it is not I'm testing it here and it's not tripping so that's a we'll have write that as a correction too inside a bathroom all receptacles have to be on a GFCI here we are in the kitchen now and uh, we have a refrigerator space here and the uh, check the receptacle for that and then we have the receptacles at the counter that all have to be on GFCI so we'll check those everything tripped. Now we have a peninsula coming out here and so we need a receptacle out on the end which also has to be on a GFCI so we'll check that. We have the receptacle and it, it does trip. 
have a microwave and a receptacle up here for that. That's good. And uh, right over the sink, garbage disposal. The uh, range is a uh, gas, but it has a receptacle that it plugs into. The dishwasher is direct wired into the dishwasher. The uh, garbage disposal plugs in here. The cord has a cord connector on it. Take a look. It left the opening. Yep, we got a connector on the Romex coming to the junction box of the dishwasher. I think we're okay. We're going to check on the uh, receptacles to make sure that the boxes are out to the face of the tile. When they put these tile backsplashes on, sometimes they don't set the boxes out far enough, which is what happened here. But they have these little add-on plastic uh, sleeves that are allowed to be added later to extend the protection of the box out to the wall surface. So that's okay. That back and around the kitchen. One other specific I want to show you is a new requirement to the 2008 code, which is for tamper resistant receptacles. Now these are a special uh, mechanism in the receptacle that keeps a child, for instance, from putting something like a paper clip or a safety pin into the receptacle. Let me show you how it works. If I try to push this in one side, it won't go in. There's a little plate back there that won't let it go in if they're going to push one at a time. But on the other hand, if I take my regular plug and push it in, when both prongs go in at the same time, it goes in fine. So they have a little mechanism that they've invented to uh, allow that to happen. The normal plug will go in, but others, small items, won't. So that's a good invention, and it's now required in all new installations. It's called temper-resistant receptacles. So the front here, we have the master suite. Have a switch on the closet light. Closet lights have reels about um, them that takes up about a page in the code book, but basically it's to assure that uh, we don't have pile of, clothes piling up and contacting light bulb and catching on fire. In the old days that happened, they started writing codes about it so that the fixtures have to be set away from the shelves in a clothes closet. Bedroom with the plugs around here and the uh, couple lights here. In bedrooms, if you remember back to the main panel, there were those breakers that are arc fault circuit interrupters. And they, everything in the bedroom is supposed to turn off when there's an arc. So the lights and the receptacles have to turn off. We have a tester here that will do, will simulate that. So we push the button, everything turns off. Receptacles turn off, the lights turn off. That's what it's supposed to do. Okay, so we're good on that. Okay, here we are in the little hall bath, and we have uh, just a light, a fan, and one receptacle, just like the other bathroom. This doesn't have the GFI unit right here, but we'll check it. It's got the wiring lights properly. We push the button, it trips it, so it is protected. So that's all we have in here. Okay, here's the last bedroom. We got the switch light comes on. Receptacles. No light in the closet. And then we'll check the arc fault breaker again by pushing the button. Lights go off, receptacles go off. We're good. Okay, so that about wraps it up. We're uh, just at the front door here, and we do have a light that's required at every exterior door with a switch inside. And um, so we're the, they haven't poured the concrete porch yet, but we're, we're done here. We're, we did pretty well. We just had a couple of small corrections. They'll come back and take care of those and house will be in good shape and ready for sale.